Hello everyone and welcome to a new, new tutorial where I'll be showing you how to make an automated money system using a data store to automatically save and remember how much money each player has when they leave and rejoin your game. And in the download of this video, um, I have a few examples that show you uh, different ways that you might use this. Uh, as you can see right here, I have currently set up to where every five seconds it goes up by one and uh, I have this little obby and this uh, shop example shop and this um, dummy and I'll be showing that at the end of the video but for right now I'm going to show you how to make it and this whole thing is really as simple as one script one server script However, uh, we want to uh, add a GUI like I showed before that um, shows the player how much money they have. So um, let's go ahead and just add the server script for now. And let me show you how this data store works. So I'm going to go ahead and call this new server script and server script service. I'm going to call it currency server. And uh, we're going to start by getting the players, player service, and I'm going to get the replicated storage as well. Replicated storage equals game, get service, replicated storage. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the uh, data store 2 module which is what I'll be using to um, handle the data store and makes everything really simple so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do a require so I'm going to do local data store um, 2 equals require and inside this parameter uh, we actually have to go and get the ID of the module because we have to go find it. So I'm going to open up a new tab and go find it real quest, real fast. It is right here. And it's this number right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and jump back in here and just paste that. That's the asset ID for the module. And um, so whenever a player joins a game, we need to add some sort of event. So that's real simple. It's a uh, player service, uh, player added event, this one right here. And uh, we're going to connect that. So colon connect to a new function. And in the parameter, we put player. Next, we need to uh, get the new data store. So I'm going to do a new, a new variable, local currency store, or money store, or whatever you want. Um, and then we're going to go back into this module right here, whatever we called that. So I called it data store 2. And once you run a new function on it, like so, uh, there's two parameters for this one. Uh, the first one is the name of the data store. And then the second one is the player. So player is easy. We just use the same uh, here, same name there. And then for the name, we just put whatever we want. Uh, for here, I'm either going to put currency or money. We put currency. And um, the next thing we need is a function to, as soon as they join the game, uh, it's going to update. It's going to send, send to their client how much, uh, how much money they have so that GUI can, t can display and they can see it themselves. So I'm going to put a local function in here. It's going to call. I'm going to call it update client currency. And inside the parameter is going to be the amount. Uh, I'm going to leave that blank for now, and then that uh, function is going to run right away, one time. And for the parameter inside here, to get the amount, so 
the parameter in here, like if this is the amount, um, the parameter here is going to be whatever comes out here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do currency store get. And this is a function that um, goes back into currency store given our two parameters, the currency, the name, and the player we're looking for. And it gets whatever value um, it has. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't always a value because if a player is joining for the first time, they might not have something. So we need to set a, a default value. So you can actually set a default value right here. Like if you wanted to say, have them start out with 100 or uh, 50 right off, you know, by default. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a variable right here called local default currency amount. I'm just set it to uh, 50. And then right here, I'm going to put default currency amount. So let's go ahead and finish this function right here. Um, before that, we need to add a remote event inside of the replicated storage. So I'm going to find replicated storage right here. And I'm going to place a uh, folder. That's how I do my remote events. I put remote events. And then inside here, I put a remote event. I'm going to call this uh, update client currency. Then here, I'm going to go find that um, rep remote event repl by doing re replicated storage, remote events, update client currency. Uh, we're going to fire client here. So sending, sending information from the server to the client. So we're using fire client. Uh, to the player inside of inside of our client we need two parameters the player we're sending it to and the amount uh, in question so the amount comes from here so that's real simple and then uh, so right right now it only runs once the function so what we need to do is we need to run we need to figure out a way to run this every single time the uh, currency store is updated uh, fortunately Data Store 2 has a cool uh, function called on update. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do currency store on update, and every time uh, the currency store with these two parameters is updated. So every time this player has a change in this named data data store, uh, we're going to run this. This function is going to get called. So the function, we're just going to put the name of the function that we want to call without, without the parentheses, just, just the name. So every time that this currency store right here is updated, this function will run and it will also automatically put the amount for us, which is great. And that's it for the server script. That's really that's on a technical uh, case that's really all there is to it however um, we need to put a GUI on the client side so they can see uh, just how much they have so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new GUI to the starter GUI and I already have one made so I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in if we go over to the game you can see right here, um, this is what it looks like. I just had a, I just put a screen GUI, and then I put a text label, and I put a local script inside that. I'm gonna delete that for now, but all this text label is is just a little black transparent with green text. So I'm gonna put a local script in here. I'm gonna call this client currency GUI. And this one is really simple. It's just every time uh, the remote event fires, we need to have a little function to update the text. So I'm gonna get the replicated storage. Game, get service, replicated storage. And then we're gonna find the event inside there. What's wrong? Remote events dot update client currency 
that on client event that's the name of the event that happens when it's fired on the client uh, we connect that with a new function and we just carry the parameter from before which is amount and then uh, we need to update the text which is real simple we just do script dot parent dot text which is right here script dot parent that text equals uh, I'm gonna put a dollar sign in quotation marks and then we'll uh, concatenate it by putting two periods with the amount so if it's a hundred it'll do dollar sign a hundred and that is all there is to it uh, as far as implementing the system um, there's no if we use this, there's no change in the amount at any point in time. So this is just the, the base. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, add a little bit of change to it. So I'm going to make a new uh, while loop right here. I'm going to do while. Um, let's put like every... You can make this whatever you want, but I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do for tutorial purposes. I'm gonna put one, so every one second, I'm gonna do a uh, for loop, so a loop inside of a loop um, for key value in pairs. Players get children. Do so every for every pair. So when we do players, which is the player of service, and we get children, which is all the players inside the player of service. For every key and value, we're going to do this local currency store equals data. So, same thing up here. We're using the same name because we're accessing the same database, same data store. Uh, but instead of player, now it's, it's just V because we have a new new variable inside here. So, if you, want, if you wanted, you could put player here. That would be all right. I like to put it as V for value. Uh, but you just got to make sure this is the same here and then uh, We're gonna do we're gonna use the increment the increment function to change the amount of uh, Change the amount inside the data store So currency store increment uh, And we'll do every one second we'll get three dollars so incrementing by three. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I can't test this in Studio because it uses a data store. Uh, I like to just publish it to Roblox and test it um, as a as a as a published game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it up real quick. Um, call this tutorial. So it's backed up locally on my on my computer. Uh, I'm gonna publish to Roblox and just save it as a game online. So new place. Call it tutorial currency and just make it private and create place. All right, cool. That's all you have to do. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and just copy this link it gives you. Go into Chrome. Go ahead and paste that. I'll take you right to it. Alternatively, you can hit Create. Um, and then hit the Start Place right here. I'm going to go ahead and test it, and we'll see if it works. So as you can see, it started me started me off with uh, fifty dollars, which was the default uh, amount, if you remember. And every one second, I believe it's incrementing by three. And let's go ahead and leave the game and see if it stays at a hundred and twenty or whatever. So I left the game. I'm gonna come back, reload it. And let's see if it saved because what data store 2 does is it automatically saves every time player removing event is called 
which is extremely useful for um, saving data when a uh, player leaves. As you can see, it, it uh, came back. It didn't go back to 50. It stayed in that uh, 120. When it's updating so fast that you can't really, can't really keep it at one point. But as you can see, it's saved, and it's working just fine. Now, in my place that I will put for download in the description of this video, uh, which is this one, I actually have a few examples of how you can use the data store, how you how you can use this tutorial in your own game. So I'm going to load this up real quick. Um, right here, I have an obby, a little shop, and a test dummy. So right here, if I just do this real quick, and I touch this one right here, it gives me $75 right off the bat which is really cool. So you can have a little reward at the end of an obstacle course. Here I have a shop. It's real simple. It's just a little case with an item in it. I click it. It gives me a confirmation message. I click confirm and then it gives me the item. And once I have the item, I can't click it anymore. And then the last thing here is um, this test dummy. Whenever I shoot it, I get a small reward every time I hit it. And when I eventually deplete it of its health, I get a much larger, much larger reward. It's a ten. I think it's ten dollars every time I hit it, and then a hundred when I uh, kill it. So those are a few examples of what you can do. Uh, the code for all of these uh, examples will be in the description. Just kind of download the studio link. And uh, if you found this tutorial helpful, please uh, share and like. Uh, it helps me out a lot. And comment and add me on Discord if you'd like. Uh, just let me know what you think, um, any questions or uh, anything you'd like to know. Just let me know, and I'm uh, free to help you. And uh, until next time, uh, this is this is it.